Very inspiring um, fellow panelists. Um, normally we're asking questions and not being put on the spot, so uh, if I appear to be a little bit shaky, there's a good reason why. And this is being taped at CBC in the Kaluit, just so you know. So um, the comments of my fellow panelists will probably be broadcasted on the radio, the power of radio. And um, just sort of continue, I'm not going to reflect too much on the um, historical events of uh, media coverage, but because they were covered pretty much, uh, but just taking on what Jeffrey was saying about Southern reporters reporting on uh, Northern issues, and I do realize that uh, a lot of the points he made are quite accurate, but um, being an Inuk reporter, it's it was and still is very ilaganakto and difficult to report on your own people. And uh, William knows that um, it's one of the most challenging uh, things to do. Uh, it's, it's, it's most challenging as a Inuk reporter when you have to report on you know things that are not too pleasant happening to your own people. Um, because growing up, you were taught to be respectful and not to ask too many um, questions and not to pry and probe into other people's lives. If they choose to tell you the story, then uh, it's up to them. But under the CBC policy, because that's pretty much the only entity in the North besides IBC, uh, which we greatly admire, um, that you can do reporting in Inuktitut uh, because we have about 11 hours of uh, Inuktitut programming throughout the day. And when I first started in the early 80s, uh, it was very intimidating to be an uh, Inuk reporter during uh, the constitutional talks, like William said, that you felt like you were this big and the other Southern reporters were this big. But over time, you gain experience, and over time, you gain a lot of um knowledge and you get to have good contacts and all that sort of stuff you and then you build confidence and during that time um, you learn to uh, teach other fellow Inuit that we are evolving as people and as as a matter of fact media can be a very powerful tool and be the voice of our Inuit so you have to just learn how to ask those questions as difficult as it may be to ask uh, the president of an organization about this or the MLA, the president of Inuit Apelikanatemi and all those people that are the voice of your people uh, because if you do not ask those questions and do not relay the stories that are really crucial to your own people that are in Greece Fjord, in Clyde River, in Kangersinik and places like that, how are they going to know what is going on? So you have this very powerful tool in your hands. The my, all might have been today. It's your laptop or your keyboard or your computer. But um, it's really important that you get involved in the media. And if you're able to speak Inuktitut, it's great. It's great a bonus if you're not, but you're, you're still Inuit. That's fine, too, because you're still uh, speaking for and on behalf of your people. Whit Fraser, Kurt Petrovich, Peter Mansbridge, um, on inna a person na tay uminga ikane to tay ma a person na tay ukwe iman na ilinga yutamani ilinya ti lao kutigon unikare ogaming kana tay ma moto sa sao luting and they get the credit kanu ingito that's okay because inu luta um uvangare ilinya ti tay si magama um up iman na ha sa kiyaro aga Rokatagasumi 
Kisiyanile <laughs> to the Federal Day School in Iglulik uh, because we were still living out on the land. Um, I think that really em embedded in my mind that um, powerless, no voice, and she doesn't know where to turn to to say, why are you taking my daughter away? She's only six. Like she's, you know, she just lost her baby teeth. You know, she's only six. What, why, why are you doing this? So I think from that moment, uh, it really instilled in me that, that, you know, there was something going on. But, you know, when you're six years old, you don't understand any of these, these things. So from that on, um, from that time, it started to become clearer later on as you grew up that there were just rapid changes going on in our lives, in our communities, um, and everywhere in the Arctic. And I think once I sort of got my brain together um, after high school, um, I realized that this is a very powerful tool, seeing Mary on TV, watching, uh, listening to her on the radio, and the people that, you know, were before me, Jonah Kelly and all those people, um, I realized that this is something that I can do that doesn't require going to university. <laughs> 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 because if you can talk and ask questions, you can work for the CBC. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> because at that time, when I was finishing high school, uh, because most of the teachers were um, from the South, obviously. Uh, God bless late Mary Pandigosel. She was one of, one of our Inuktitut teachers. Anyway, um, you were not told these are the options to continue education. You were not told you can go to university in Ottawa. You were not told that you can go to college. Um, it was, you know, learn how to type and learn how to do these basic skills, and then you can get a job at a, at the, a, at a government office. Honest to God, Harry Flaherty was in high school with, uh, with me, and he, uh, the boys in some of the communities went to shop class so that they can apply their practical skills that they learned in high school to get a job right away. So all these things, um, I think, really led to uh, working in the media and asking all these questions as to why we do not have a voice and as to why all these things are happening to us and nobody's asking us anything. So um, with that note, um, it, it's been a privilege. I commend CBC North for doing what they have done, CBC in general. And uh, I hope that eventually there'll be a media arts center and eventually there'll be uh, other organizations that start their own kind of media, especially young people. You know, with today's technology, I don't get to see. You can write from your bedroom, take pictures, send them on the internet, and you don't even have to get dressed and put on makeup like Peter Mansbridge to go on TV. You can do it from your home. You can do it anywhere. And I want you to be the next generation reporters for your people, whether you just write in English or even you, if you write in Inuktitut, that would be even better. But do it, because we need you. Because for in the future, you know, everybody might, everybody has access to the internet, which is wonderful. But in the future, you know, we still need people telling us what's going on in the world.